I've got to be honest, guys, I haven't been able to sleep recently because I've been so excited for the second playable clan reveal for Bloodlines 2. Chinese Rune, the devs, they've announced that Tremere will be the next playable clan. And they've released a new post, a new video, similar to what they did for the first clan reveal. And what they've actually said is each week we were going to find out what the new playable clan would be. There's going to be four of them at release. But of course, as it says here, following launch, two additional clans will be made available in DLC. So of course, they're already trying to get us to spend more money beyond the game's release. They're saying, don't worry, if you want to give us more, you want to pay more cash, we've got you covered. I'll say this, I've criticised the devs. I've shat on the game, I've talked about how poor, how putrid it actually looks, but I can't fault them for consistency because the second clan reveal, it's another 15 second video. The first was 15 seconds, they're backing that up again this time around. Incredible. We're going to watch this video first because we've got gameplay here. Brand new Bloodlines 2 gameplay and if we jump in, have a look at this new clan, have a look at how the Tremere play. Truly breathtaking, and as we can see, there's going to be an extended gameplay reveal in Dwan 2024. Maybe we'll get more than 15 seconds when the time comes, but I want to break this down, because if we jump back to where there was actually gameplay, I know I said 15 seconds, that's probably generous, because there's really only 7, 8 seconds of actual footage. But let's have a look here. So what seemingly happens, it's very difficult. I try and pause and then the, the gameplay's gone. But it looked like for a second there that the person had jumped off this balcony. But I watched this before to try and get an understanding of what was going on. And it seems like this character, you, Fire, the playable character, is actually pulling them off the balcony with their abilities. But if we start again and play this through... You've really got to break that down because otherwise it just looks like they're jumping off. It, it kind of looks like maybe Chinese Room gave that character a playable build of the game and they decided they'd rather jump off a building rather than play that. I, I shouldn't make that joke. But if we continue on here... What exactly is going on here? Because this looks interesting. Let's play that through again. Okay, again, I wasn't sure what was going on if he was sort of throwing their bullets back on them. But after doing a bit more research, looking into it a bit more, apparently this is meant to be blood. You're shooting blood at them. And, and I apologize that I've got to keep skipping back, but the gameplay's so bare bones. This is it. There's about five frames that I've got to play through. Supposedly, this is all blood. And if we get out of this stupid video... And we get back into the breakdown here from the Chinese room. It will all become clear. Because who are the Tremere? Who are this playable clan? Clan Tremere embraces scholars, academics, researchers, and other relentless pursuers of knowledge. Didn't see a lot of that in the gameplay vid. I saw someone beating the shit out of a few characters. However, I didn't really see the relentless pursuit of knowledge. That part seems to be missing. Maybe that will come later. Apparently, they have an obsession with blood. Vampire blood. And that's what was meant to be going on in the video. These screenshots, they make it look a little bit clearer than the actual gameplay footage. Where we can now see that, all that those swirlies, that goo is meant to be blood that you're firing through. So unfortunately, they couldn't really convey that with the vid, but they've got some screenshots here to break it down. Unfortunately, I don't think the game is actually going to look like this. I honestly think this art style, if they had have just gone with this, the game might have looked okay, but I imagine real art probably was expensive. Having outdated 3D models was probably more achievable. It is a bit sad that a year out from release, the only way they can actually make things clear is with screenshots that don't actually resemble the full game. But they do tell us what to expect when playing a Tremere. As a Tremere in Bloodlines 2, you use your arcane powers to control your own blood and that of your foes. 
So that's exactly what we've seen. We were using our blood. We were using their blood. We were making things happen. The play style is rewarding when keeping your distance in combat. Making enemies scream in agony as you boil their blood. Shaping your own vitae into projectables or even ripping the blood from their veins. This all sounds nice in text. It sounds like they have people internally who can write a good paragraph. But unless that actually translates into the game, it's all fluff. I didn't see that in the footage. I'm not confident they have anything resembling this. I think it's just a really simple animation that makes it look like there's goo flying around on the screen. But it's not really blood. Nothing's really happening. And the sad thing is, this is yet another example of a clan, like the first one, the Bruja I think it was, where the clan is basically watered down to being all about combat, all about how you fight your foes, but absolutely nothing around what else you'll be doing. When I think of Bloodlines 1, most competent RPGs, I'm not only thinking about the combat, I'm thinking about how am I going to be playing through my quests. Depending on the sort of class I play or the skills I choose, am I going to be able to talk my way around situations if I need to get into an apartment building? If I'm more of a strength build, if my character's built around strength, power, am I able to move something heavy to get through the car park, for instance, and sneak my way in? Can I use stealth? Do I have certain abilities that are a bit more interesting than purely combat related? I've seen zero of that. They haven't shown it. They don't seem interested in, in presenting any of it. I think it's because it doesn't exist. The game at the moment is a, a walking simulator, some sort of narrative RPG that then has some combat elements thrown in. I'm not sure it's going to weave together very well. It's going to be purely combat and purely going through cutscenes, essentially, where you can choose dialogue, but I doubt it's going to have much bearing on the entire game. Maybe there's different endings, but I highly doubt that there are quests with a lot of choice and consequence. If they had that, I'm sure they'd be showing it. They'd be bragging about it. They'd be proud to show it. There's nothing really that they should be proud about here. We've got another image of fire. And this time, she has got red hair, blood-coloured hair, instead of that neon blue hair from the last one. So that's an upgrade at the very least. It seems like depending on the clan you play, it's going to determine your haircut's colour. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you can change the haircut. So you're stuck with this, I'm sorry. Modern 21st century progressive haircut. You do have this outfit though, last time it was a leather jacket for the Bruiser, I believe, this time you've got the trench coat it looks like. They have said that all clans can earn all of the outfits. So that just sort of waters down again your choice. It might sound cool that you can cosplay as anything you want, unless there's literally only four outfits in the entire game, one for each clan. But that seems to be about it for the clans, it decides your hair colour, your outfit, but then you can just change your outfit anyway. So it probably boils down to combat and nothing else. And I imagine that's just a handful of abilities that are different depending on which of the four clans you choose. I should say six, because remember you can pay more money for more of these incredible clans down the line. And if it literally is just combat, it's going to make the DLC look totally pathetic. I think they mentioned that one of them will affect gameplay differently, but I imagine it's mostly just going to be the combat abilities and maybe they'll throw in a six 60 minute story so that they're not false advertising. A 60 minute story specifically for one clan to try and get people opening their wallets yet again. Now there was actually more announced today. There was a dev diary, but in terms of the next clan reveal, they're going to be on hiatus for Thanksgiving next week. This confused me because here in Australia, Thanksgiving doesn't get mentioned. I assumed it was purely an American thing. These guys are based in the UK, and Paradox, the publisher, are based in Europe. So I'm actually not sure what the bearing Thanksgiving actually has on them. It seems like maybe an excuse to, to not do any work next week, or at least not have to show us anything, because Thanksgiving doesn't seem like it would be relevant for them. I, I assume that they're still at the office or, or wherever they work. So they'll be back anyway in a couple of weeks for the third playable clan reveal. And instead of getting one of these wonderful Steam posts with the video, the blog post, it will be at the PC Gaming Show. So on November 30th, so a couple of weeks from now, I'll make sure to cover that. I don't want you to miss out on these incredible clans. But if we have a look at some of the Steam comments around this, I'm sure people are going to be thrilled. This person says, so far the reveal consists of how each clan fights uses their powers, 
interesting that it's not far from what we saw in the Hard Suit Labs version. And I've said this before, but the Hard Suit Labs version, in retrospective, did a reasonable job of at least looking like it was trying to be a sequel to Bloodlines 1. They were going for the same vibe. I've heard a lot of reports, rumours, insiders, who have mentioned that the game was absolute rubbish. It did not work. There were maybe some grand ideas on paper, but they did not translate to the game. The people at the studio, Hard Suit Labs, they were incompetent. They could not make an RPG. Don't let looks deceive you. Don't judge a book by its cover, because what we saw, it, it might have looked okay, but the actual game was falling apart at the seams. And it seems like, from all those rumours, that there were people, maybe head honchos at Hard Suit Labs, who would go back to Paradox, the publisher, who was spending the money to have this game made. They would go to them and sort of say, hey, we're doing all these cool features. Have that faith in us. Keep giving us money because we're going to deliver. But they were lying, basically. They were exaggerating. And when Paradox realized they had no idea what they were doing, that's when the game was scrapped. So don't have nostalgia for that version. It might have looked okay. I'm sure there were some people acting in good faith, trying to get it made, giving it that vibe that kind of looked nice but they couldn't really make a game to save their life, at least not an RPG. There's some other nice comments here, like, looks amazing, can't wait. I'd have to hope that this person is kidding. The character and whole game looks like garbage, just scrap it, desperate cash grab. You've got a few of the usual copers. Guys, it's just a render of the character, which probably means that it is whip and not final. So yeah, it sucks, but let's not judge it for now. It's a year out from release. Most games are going through the polish phase. They're not building the bare bones of the game. The 15 second clips they're showing us, I would bet money that is literally about all they've got right now. Maybe they've got some environments a little bit going on, but there is absolutely not a playable game here. I'd be absolutely shocked if that was the case. They're rushing this through. Maybe they think they'll get it ready in, in 12 months time, but I'd be shocked if it's not yet another rush release. It is going to release broken because Paradox are going to want to get some of that investment back for all the money they've wasted on this game over the years, firing a developer, getting a new one in who convinced them that they'll be able to rush it out in three years. They'll want to try and recoup some of their losses. And I can tell you right now that the devs are going to come out with a roadmap, not a, a roadmap of announcing plans like they're doing now. They'll be coming out with the game roadmap on release day where they'll be saying, hey, I know the game is totally fucked up, but bear with us, guys. We're going to fix it. I know you paid full price, but we'll fix the game one day. Stick with us. Replay it in 12 months and it might be somewhat playable, somewhat acceptable. Now, I did mention that the... Cloud announcement wasn't all we got today. We also got this Dev Diary recap about atmosphere and art. And they've said, Good evening, Kindred. This week, as mentioned in our last Dev Diary, we're bringing you our first video recap. We've got artists here today. We've got our community manager. And we're going to summarize their individual inputs and answer fan questions. That sounded interesting. So I went through this video and it was a, a whole lot of nothing. If you sit through this video, you may be a bit dozy once it's finished because there was genuinely nothing in here. There were no interesting questions, nothing of value. It was specifically talking about little pieces of art. They had more screenshots, certainly no new gameplay, certainly no tough questions. It really seems like the Chinese room are filtering through all the criticism and they'd have to be. It is hard to find people who are positive about the game. If we go to the Reddit, and I mean there's the Discord as well, there's some other forums, but they're all about the same. What fans are saying is all pretty similar. The more I hear about Bloodlines 2, the less interested I become. That's one of the threads. I really like the idea of playing an Elder, but Fabian ruins it and it feels like a cop-out. Fabian was the little assistant, the Johnny Silverhand in your head, who probably gives you tips, probably dumbs things down and, and tells you about how the modern world should be because the elder might have outdated thoughts and opinions and that wouldn't be acceptable so Fabian will make sure they're thinking along the same lines then you've got the people living in denial saying things like how about we just drop bloodlines 2 from the name 
Surely that will fix the terrible writing, the putrid characters, the combat animations that look like a Flash game from 25 years ago. That would surely make this okay and make it worth parting with $70. That's pretty much where we're at. People either hate this or they are absolutely coping and just trying to find excuses for why the game looks terrible, why we shouldn't judge it now. No one is saying this looks good. Sadly, we won't get a clan reveal for two weeks, but I'm sure there'll be that build up, that excitement and hype, so we can cover it then. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.